Hi, I'm Greg Paulson, Director of Application Engineering at Zometry, and I love putting 3D materials to the test. Today, we'll make parts sweat under extreme heat and pressure, like an autoclave environment. Why this test? Zometry engineers have a lot of experience building medical devices using all our manufacturing technologies. We know better than most that materials really do matter. Many plastics, even those rated for medical devices, have a hard time withstanding an autoclave, which sterilizes items at around 121 Celsius and 15 PSI of pressure using steam. But sometimes, it's easier to see it, to believe it. But I'm at home, and unfortunately do not have access to professional lab equipment. Luckily, I came across a scientific journal article that's showing how you may be able to achieve laboratory sterilization results with an Instant Pot smart pressure cooker. I am testing five materials from three industrial 3D printing platforms today. So will it survive? Let's find out together. Do not try this at home. I've taken the appropriate safety precautions and have years of experience in this type of testing. The Instant Pot will be running at high pressure with half a liter of water to create steam. Once at pressure, we will hold for 15 minutes, then check the results. I'm running this outside to manage any fumes that may emit, and I'm gonna wear appropriate protective equipment. I've printed a mask, its cover, and an ear saver from the NIH 3D Print Exchange to see how the geometry may affect the outcomes. I have copied these sets in five materials. Three Stratasys Fortis Fuse Deposition Modeling Materials, ASA, ABS M30i, and PCISO Polycarbonate. The latter two specifically designed for medical 3D printing. I have Polyjet Vero Black Plus, a rapid prototyping material which will represent most photopolymers in this outcome. And lastly, I have Selective Laser Centered PA2200 Nylon 12, one of our most popular and versatile materials. So we're gonna try all three geometries at the same time. I'm actually gonna put this, I think I'm gonna do max, mask side down here. Keep it consistent and we'll go and throw these guys in. All right, we'll come back in just a bit to check out the results. So now we're gonna do a steam release. So this is kind of quick release on the instant pot. Boom, all right. So this is now safe to open up. Let's see what the results are. Oh man, a little bit of deformation there, don't you see with that orange ASA? All right. Okay, so let's talk about the results from this test. We put all these into a pressure cooker and steamed them for 15 minutes under high pressure to simulate something like an autoclave sterilization process. Some of the lower melt temperature materials like ASA and ABS M30 definitely deflected. Uh, you can see the visual warping here, and especially on these long thin parts, these, these tended to contour around uh, that grate that we had to kind of offset uh, the, the parts from the base of the uh, container. This is something that would not be typically rated for autoclave in the first place, but it's really interesting to see why. Uh, showing this high level of deformation, 
even a really interesting discoloration of the ASA, which is very unique because it is actually color stabilized for other environments like UV light, for instance. The PC ISO, this is a medical polycarbonate material. I didn't see any real deflection of this part. And even uh, this, uh, this ear guard here, this ear saver, is straight as an arrow. So the polycarbonate really held up to that heat and pressure. The wild card, and always is a wild card for me, are these thermoset materials like photopolymers. I was expecting this to come out flat as a pancake, almost like a fruit roll up as it just was squished down by its own, by its own gravity. It did soften up, but it held its shape overall. And in fact, if I'm gonna do this quick little test here, so do these parts still mate together? Indeed they do. So it did actually hold up to its shape and geometry. That being said, there's about a dozen other reasons why I would not use this for a medical mask, including skin sensitivity uh, because of this, this photopolymer resin. Now SLS Nylon actually is the only one of this group that's rated for steam autoclave. So I did this last just to kind of show it as more of a control. Um, nylon is highly temperature resistant and uh, this has actually already been qualified and tested for this environment. In fact, this NIH mask model is qualified for nylon specifically. Uh, so I wanted to throw this in there and also just show why it's such a useful material because you still have high flexibility while also maintaining that geometry over multiple sterilizations. So it's really interesting to see how each one of these materials is affected and there's more to test. Sterilization, cleaning, and decontamination of 3D printed parts will be different depending on the material chosen. Make sure to check out Zometry's FAQ and online resources or shoot us a message to make sure the material you choose matches your application. And that's a wrap on this Willet episode. You can also check out our other engineering challenges or order 3D printed parts at Zometry.com. Thank you so much.